All right. Welcome, Leroy. This time the connection is going to work. I know it. I can feel it. <laughs> Cut out before, but we're good now. Okay. So tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're at. Uh, you know, you've got some awesome work. It looks really professional. Is this like studio work I'm looking at? I don't, I'm not familiar with this game. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it's actually not um, studio work. It's um, my own personal pro um, portfolio. There, um, the levels are from the Unreal Marketplace. Ah, um, nice. So yeah, I I had like an art director, a VFX director, help me. Um, I guess yeah, help me um, update. Ooh, what? How can I say it? He helped me produce high quality work type thing. He gave me a lot of feedback. Yeah, I mean, I'll just let it play here while I get to know you a little bit more. So I've been doing this project. I mean, that's really smart, like getting these really nice assets together to showcase mm -hmm. your work there. It makes it feel like, oh, this guy's been working professionally and knows what he's doing. It's actually something mm -hmm. I should recommend to more students for sure, because uh, providing that backdrop really makes a big difference. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're looking to get your first job in the industry then? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been at this, like making effects, that kind of stuff? And, and when did you sign up for the class? Um, making effects properly, I guess the past year, like um, I really delved deep into it. Um, and as for your class, I signed up this week, earlier this week. There you go. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a lot of like looking at what you've got so far, but then really planning where you want to get to. What is mm -hmm. your dream job? Whew. There's no right. Do you know <laughs> I've I've spent so long um trying to get get a job or you know updating my skills for a job yeah. that dream job I haven't really thought about it too much. I know I guess it would be um making effects for um I guess I've just finished playing Doom so um you know like um realistic hyper realistic realistic type of effects mm -hmm. um an actiony type of game I think would be my dream job. Um, dream company, Bioware, Blizzard. I know Blizzard's totally different than, um, you know, um, realistic effects. They don't really do realistic, I think. I think um, Diablo gets closer in that realm. I mean, it's very magical. Mm, it's like, yeah, it's magical, but believable, if that makes sense. Like you look at it, yeah, that like, makes oh, sense. Yeah, it's sense. grounded and feels lit, especially the most recent mm. Diablo stuff they're doing. Mm -hmm. but yeah so um yeah basically just really high quality effects um yeah. uh, my mind says more realistic but i'm very open to stylized as well you know i'm I, open to anything i think you'll find that the two blend together more than you might assume like mm -hmm. all of the principles of timing and composition and even color really play mm -hmm. into more quote-unquote realistic effects and it's funny because everything is a stylization at the end of the day. I've heard mm. this from a lot of folks that do work on these more uh, high-end PBR games with like super like detailed uh, vibes to them and like the particles mm. are lit and they sit in the environment really nicely. You know, they'll say, what we're doing is stylized. You know, this is not yeah. real life. <laughs> this yeah. Is, yeah. We have to exaggerate things here and there to make it feel better than real, you know? Like, yeah, yeah hyper realistic if you will but that is a style too and so i think it's funny because we assume oh if it's got like really punchy shapes and it's like graphic tune shaders that's stylized but if it's lit in the environment and believable then that's realistic and mm. uh i think that i think it's just a spectrum and everything is on a spectrum of style and so yeah anyway looking through this i think i think that's smart to focus on gearing things more toward that direction because you're already you have momentum in that direction already mm -hmm. and i would say what i would like to see is you know the camera shake camera shake's tough because it does make it feel like epic and cinematic of course mm -hmm. but maybe we could see that same explosion i know that the next frame the next one is a smaller version of that but maybe we mm -hmm. could see like that same big one without the camera shake like this okay. the small one has like a smaller camera shake which i like uh mm -hmm. i can still make out the timing and the 
the different aspects that you're doing in there without too much distraction. But with the bigger mm -hmm. one, there's so much camera shake and like even like uh, post-process, like flare, you know, it's mm -hmm. like really hard to make out what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. I would say it's pretty successful as it is. I love that, you know, these bits are falling at a nice slow pace. So it feels nice and big. There's a great sense of scale to it when you slow things down like that. I can't tell yeah. though if it's like slow motion in the camera or because like the, the revolve slows down as well. So I don't know if like, did you actually slow down the timing in the game or? No, no, no. Everything's moving at a good time, I imagine. So I didn't slow anything down. Okay, okay. It's just the actual camera. <laughs> then in that case, it's great. The camera move kind of like slowing and then speeding up is interesting. Um, I thought it would have been better than just having it linear, you know, just one speed all the way through. I thought to have it ease in and out yeah, might have been yeah. a nice touch. So the impacts here, I think, um, let's, let's just like look, the, look at these for a minute. I think that I need a better sense of its contact with the dirt. Right now, there's so much in the puff that's like up off the ground, and there's not mm -hmm. a sense of like a decal in the dirt that, like the dirt itself getting disrupted and, and broken okay. and mm -hmm. kind that's of shooting point. out. Um, mm -hmm. It feels detached from what it's what it's hitting. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you, <laughs> you you probably wouldn't want to do this on most games, but like even if this cast shadows <laughs> and i know that's like like ah that's way, way expensive in a lot of cases and you don't want to do it but just something to get this effect to feel like it was tied to that ground because right now it's just floating above the ground kind of it's not like mm -hmm. really making contact with the ground in a visceral sort of way yeah this mm -hmm. is nice the splash that you've got on the ground there feels like it connects it nicely i do think mm -hmm. that the way that 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 radial piece on the water the way that it animates, I'd like to see it kind of translate into ripples, you know, and you could get some mm -hmm. nice refraction on some ripples that come out. Yeah. That, I mean, this this is a very impactful thing, a bullet hitting the surface of water. It hits hard, right? And it's going to disturb mm -hmm. that water surface and it's going to make it ripple outwards beyond just that effect. Again, it's kind of the, it's kind of the issue of the effect not feeling like it's sitting in that world. Like it's not... Okay. If that makes sense, like it's it's not interacting with the world. It's just playing itself and then it's done and out of there. And the world that it leaves behind is not any different for it. Nothing's changed. I have got ripples in it. It's just um I guess maybe okay, not okay. enough or something. Yeah. So okay. And maybe they die too soon then, right? Because it's like I'm not seeing any um any aftermath from that splash sort of residual and I guess some of that would might depend on gameplay. Like maybe they want the splash out of the way. Um, but you can okay. do something subtle in there that kind of follows through, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, uh, are these like splash renders that you're using? Like still? No, it's all um, textures and from Photoshop. Uh, is that what you meant? Mm -hmm. So they were all painted. So between, it was um, painted and using, um, water brushes so it was a combination of the two they feel pretty nice they're nice and simple i think mm -hmm. you're going to find in the class the goo assignment is going to be a lot of fun for you because yeah. we talk mm -hmm. about really designing those shapes and then creating an interesting dissolve map so that mm -hmm. that that goo can kind of eat away and mm -hmm be more of a center stage effect obviously just a hit impact on the water like this isn't like meant to be a showcase of like something big. And that would be what I would say generally about your portfolio is really taking on something pretty ambitious. There was a guy who did a portfolio for, oh shoot, what was the game? Yeah, it was Evolve, Justin, I think his name is Justin. Yeah, Justin Cherry. So this guy did a, a demo reel and you know you might say that this this is more in line with the the realistic kind of stuff but obviously very fantastical um you know Justin Cherry 
Um, and he's got some stuff in here with like splatters and things. Hmm. That oh, this stuff is just, it's got so much personality, but it's still very believable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I totally understand what you mean. That's kind of the next direction I want to go in. That type of those type of effects. As yeah. a matter of fact, it's so gross. <laughs> the different aliens. Here. <laughs> but yeah, this like goopy, slidey thing, and like the splatter and stuff like that. Like, you know, this is kind of like would fit into like Gears of War or like God of War Devil or, or right. the Halo series or something that's going for. You know, they want it to feel like this is so cool. The splash. Mm. And you can just see like there's a lot of material magic going on. And you're going to learn some yeah. of that in the class, like how to how to get some of these materials to do things that are really interesting with like vertex offset and dissolves and things like that to get them to move in a, a great way. Mm -hmm. and combine that with the start that you've already got. and You're going to start seeing more sophistication come through in your effects, which is going to be really great. Mm -hmm. But really what I'm trying to get at too by showing the Justin Cherry effects is this guy, these are like showstopper effects. These are like center stage. All of your attention is on this, this moment. And if you can have a dozen of those in your demo reel, or even just a handful, like just a few of those in your demo reel, like mm -hmm. it's going to just show so well for you. And people are going to be like, yeah. holy cow, we got to learn from this guy. Or man, we know we can really plug him in and he's going to take off and do a great job. And we trust yeah. that he can handle the bullets hitting water or the bullets hitting dirt. We know he's going to be able to handle that, but mm. really we know that because he's doing this thing that's like this bigger undertaking. And that's why mm. in the class, you know, we do more center stage kinds of things. You know, if you're going mm -hmm. for more, more along this lines of uh, more along these lines of style, probably the lightning bolt is going to be the least relevant to you. So you're going to want to focus most of your time on the other three lessons. The, the wispy cloud has some great, stuff in there for you to learn from as far as being like a nice showstopper with good contrast a good core light and like wispiness mm -hmm. around it and you can you can adjust the softness of the edge on certain things so they don't feel so like styly like you know crisp edge cr cartoony kind of vibe to it but you can like soften it up a lot and still have okay. it kind of dissolve away and these are all settings in the shader that you're going to find uh in there so that's going to work i think nice for you <laughs> so keep Looking an eye out for that. It. Yeah, on the muzzle flash, I feel like, I mean, it's a solid muzzle flash. It's like, I don't know that, yeah, I don't know that it really, I'm actually not an expert on muzzle flashes, so I should, probably shouldn't talk too much about it. I do feel like, uh, you know, shooting the flames off, like out here, you probably want a different element for that versus the one that's like at the core of the heat because really that comes from just that gunpowder meeting the air and it flashes and burns away right so it's probably not going to be burning as much further out gosh there's so many different ways to approach a muzzle flash though honestly um it just it feels almost like a flamethrower a little bit like a sputtering flamethrower when you get it too far out away from mm -hmm. the tip of that um, from, the, mm -hmm. from the angle behind, though, I think it's mostly okay. It's doing all right. It might just be that I can tell that it's just like a sprite sheet of textures. Maybe that's the problem I'm having with it. If there was just a mm -hmm. little more interest in the motion, so it wasn't just like a flat texture popping on and popping off. Mm. Um, if there was some sense of a dissolve or something animating in that frame just like it for another frame or two okay might be a little more uh, a little more satisfying a little less corny like just like popping texture shapes onto there okay yeah but again maybe that's kind of the style they want they just want, nope we want it simple really highly high focus on performance so this is cool right this shield you've got I feel like the sparkles aren't needed. Uh, aren't needed, right? Well, I think they're fine. It's just they're 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 not making a lot of sense to me right now. So here's here's like something to think about when it comes to different elements. Um, 
always think about what each element is for, what caused it, what it's there, what it's accomplishing, what it's made out of, how hot it is, how fast it's moving, so that you know in your head how it fits into that environment, how it fits into that effect. So you've mm-hmm. got these like flashing points of light, right? But they're so random that they're not really connected to anything else in the effect. And at some okay. points, they're like flashing up above. I'm trying to like capture it when it's, um, let's see, I think I can, yeah. At some points, they're like flashing up here. Yeah, like there's one up here. Mm-hmm. And then things like that, right? So the issue I have with it is like, what in this force field is causing these points to to spark it's actually really awesome motion that they have but what i want to see is like something like circuitry meeting at a point and that's causing it to flash and then it's it zings over here and then it flashes over here right it's like so it's like ricocheting around and then flashing when it like releases a burst of energy because it's trying to stay contained but these things are like on the sphere flashing and the other piece of it is, you know, with this lens flare effect, it's tricky because you've got a hexagon motif on the shield, but then mm-hmm. the hexagons also come up off of the shield. And mm, so and I should like, turn down the flare then. Well, like the trouble I'm having with it is that you're using the same texture and color for both the the hexes on the shield, but then also the camera facing ones as well. Like here's a hexagon here. That's like a camera lens flare, which is cool. It's just, it's kind of just all getting lost and it's not composed. So it's all about composing your effect, right? So that you have control over, I know these are my hexes and they animate in such and such a way on the sphere. And then these are my lens flares and they, they respond to these bright lights because le- this would cause a lens flare to happen, right? These bright things mm-hmm. yeah. would cause yeah. it to flare out. Otherwise, if you have like really subtle lens flares through here, it's it's not going to make as much sense. So, yeah, it's kind of just like, Gosh, I think it's a fun experiment. Maybe you do have camera space lens flares. Are they truly, is it done as a post-process? Yeah, yeah. It's not my lens flare, yeah. So, yeah, it's a post-process. Okay, okay. And I think it is the spots that are actually causing the lens flare. I think it's not the shield. Oh, so it actually, it just happens to be... Um, the same shape. The same. Are those pentagons or hexagons? Hexagons. <gasps> They're pentagons. Hexagons. Oh, no, no, the lens flares are pentagons. Ah, okay. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I think it's just causing mental confusion because it's like the hexes on here and these lens flares feel so similar. Just differentiating them, I think. Because, yeah, okay. So I'm. It's funny because I couldn't tell when it was like a lens flare. Versus when it was a shield shimmer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because they just yeah, felt so they felt too much in the same ballpark. And so my brain was like, is that a lens flare? What was that? It's kind of, I, I, you know, I kind of like the strobiness. It feels really original. I just feel like it just needs to come be reined in, in a sense. Mm-hmm. And this wispiness that comes off of the side right here, I'm seeing the Mm -hmm. edge of that mesh on the wisps that you have like around the sphere, the ones that are coming up off of it. I'm seeing those, those edges as it wraps away from the camera. And so you'll find in the class, there's a shader that uh, there's a a property in the shader that you can fade off that edge as it gets perpendicular to the camera with the Fresnel. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that'll be helpful there, but also you might do some cards with some wisps on them that also kind of rotate and like sort of float out a little bit to break mm-hmm. up that silhouette slightly. Because, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it kind of feels like you've got the shell of the shield and then the shell of the wisps, and it's like shell inside of shell. 
the, right the okay gift. is that vertex okay is that vertex offset on that wispiness yeah 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 see because i'm seeing the edge of the mesh you don't want that you want the wisps to be hidden and soft on the edges and so that you can hide your illusion right you don't want people to be able to say oh i can tell what you're doing there you want people to be asking like how did he do it i gotta know you know and that's that's really when you know you've got a winner okay okay it's when you fooled people and you've tricked them with your wizardry that's the key the outer edge is nice it's got a nice like you know distorted glow to it i think the bottom edge could use some work it's a little too crispy it's kind of just like right. this burnt like very solid clean edge in a world that feels like it shouldn't have that clean of a, a style to it like i mean Okay. obviously it's like a clean environment but it's a much more like um like especially here on the ground things have like beveled edges and they they feel like three-dimensional in that world they don't feel flat whereas you've got like Right. a solid white outline all the way around that bottom ring this top ring Mm -hmm. is working much better because it's kind of broken up it's got a little bit of just distortion to it it just feels a Okay. little more tactile like it's actual energy sitting in that world versus just like a very flat ribbon Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, I understand what yeah you mean. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I think the problem here is these glows on the ground aren't matching up. It's almost like the collision and the ground plane aren't the same. And so you get these embers sitting up off the ground a bit. And then the glow is like down beneath. Are you seeing this? Yeah. It's like something, something funky there. Because ideally, the center of the glow... would be at ground level. And there's another one with this. Uh, check out on the um, the wispy nether explosion. We have like a glow and what actually what um, he did, what David Shovlin did for that effect in particular is he actually just did a sphere mesh and let it clip through the environment. But then he also put... Um, depth fade on it so it gets fuzzier as it like contacts the ground and Mm then -hmm. he put fresnel on it so it's also fuzzy around its outside so it feels like a, a glowy ball but then as it clips through the ground it Yeah. Mm um it still gets kind of flat on its bottom but not like -hmm. Yeah, yeah. cut off completely it, it it sits nicely in the ground there so something like that or you could even just do depth fade on a card like a depth, depth fade on these and, and let them sort of do that same kind of thing Mm -hmm. although that's a lot for gpu particles i'm guessing these are gpu particles so you couldn't Yeah, the GPU particles. Yeah. then i guess fixing the offset from the glow to the Do they just have lights attached to them? No, you can't put lights on GPU particles. How are you doing the glow on the ground? Oh, shame. Then no, they must be CPU particles then. Yeah, I think I had a <laughs> problem with the um, collisions with the GPU particles. I think maybe they are CPU then. And I know it's a lot. Obviously, I wouldn't put that in a game, but um, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe that's what the issue was. Yeah. Well, depending on But the I... scene, you might be able to sneak it in. If there's nothing Really? else going on. <laughs> um, okay, but let's talk about like other aspects aside from the, the technical bits of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's got like a nice. You've kind of got the the wider spread and then the more concentrated ones in the middle. Um, it's nicely composed. I feel like after it happens. There's no sense of like residual anything like it's still kind of like, bzz, 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 you know, wherever that light bulb burst. Also building up to it, 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 I'd like a little bit of a story. Like, is there a light bulb about to pop or is it a loose end of a wire or like tying it into something 
that feels grounded in that environment. Again, it's kind of just that connection piece of your particle to the world around it. Um, yeah, it's just something missing. Yeah, telling a little story there would be good. But Okay. honestly, so all these all these fixes for these smaller things might not be the best use of your time. I mean, sure, like if you just want to start out, just this is already on your mind, you're like in the zone with these things and you want to just finish the thought that you started, by all means, go back and polish these up. But <coughs> definitely, I think the thing that's going to be most impactful in your portfolio is going to be some more center stage kind of stuff. Like if you can go through and make water like this, you know, and actually claim it as your own, it is a little misleading maybe that people might think, oh, did you also do the water? You know, because the water is a big part of the scene and it's an effect. Um, you might just mention explosion here just to keep okay. yourself honest. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's okay. still, I think it still shows really nice to put it in an environment where it feels very professional. So, um, you just say explosion VFX. Okay. Yeah. That's and, a good point, and the destruction part too. Did you do, do that destruction? Yeah, I've done the destruction as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. Okay. So that covers the reel. You mentioned that you wanted to go more towards, I guess we'll show these too. This is other people's work that you wanted to sort of emulate or you said you wanted to strive toward it. Well, do you know, um, uh, Jason, after seeing your, um, seeing um, uh, Justin Cherry's reel, that's exactly the type of thing I want to go towards. I just hadn't seen a reel like that. Oh, gotcha. But it's more the Justin Cherry thing. That's exactly what I want to strive towards next. Okay. Well, then there you go. Shout out to How to would Justin. I get? I mean, so it's, yeah, it's like, um, I understand there's a lot of um, material wizardry, but surely there's a lot of textual work as well. Yeah, so... Well, actually, and also, sorry, um, I guess a more important question is, how do you conceptualize an effect from scratch? Like, do you play a game or do you watch something and say, oh, I want to make something like this? Or, I mean, how do you personally do it? Um, well, it's like any art form. Uh, you're only as good as your reference, right? Hmm. And so yeah. you're really going to have a hard time achieving anything if you don't know what you're trying to to move towards so mm -hmm. you know fill your mind with good reference live action reference other games movies whatever that may be that's gonna inspire you but also give you something to obsess about a little bit and to think about all the time so you're wondering mm -hmm. how did they do it how can <coughs> I do that what's the technique all these kinds of things right so definitely reference is a great starting point and I think a lot of the, even the feedback I gave you, you could have realized through reference. You could have realized, oh, they're doing something I'm not. What is that? You know, and then really mm -hmm. diving into that. So that's number one. I think with good enough reference, you don't always need a concept. You can just say, well, I just want to emulate that person and just do what they did. So mm -hmm. I think that sometimes can get you over that hump. In the class, we do have a whole section on uh, concept. So That'll teach you the painting skills that you need to block out your effect, get an idea on paper of what you're trying to achieve. I would say, like, make, make each of them your own. You know, you don't have to stick to the same color palettes and shapes. You can take the principles that you're learning and just sort of shoot from the hip and say, I, I kind of want to go more for this other direction, or I want to add more detail than they're doing in the portfolio, or I want to throw in a sense of lighting. And so I'm going to actually change the shader to be a lit shader instead of an unlit shader and that kind yeah. of thing. So uh, definitely make the class your own for sure. Um, okay. Have a goal of, I want to make this effect and just do one at a time. And then know in the back of your mind that, you know, you're probably going to do like three or four of those but don't necessarily plan out all four of them at first. You'll get overwhelmed. <laughs> so just one at a time. You know, that's what we do at work is we get one assignment at a time and we knock it out and then we get the next one and then we tackle that when it's time. So I would say don't get too far ahead of yourself. Just say, this is the effect that I'm picking. I'm going to just make this my work for the next however long it takes. Some people it takes a few days, some people a few weeks, right? Depends on the time you're putting into it, honestly. 
Uh, yeah. It's going to be quite a few hours per effect. So, mm -hmm. yeah, does that help give you a good picture of how to approach it? Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, 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 it helps with it. Yeah. yeah, I think the painting skills are very valuable because it gives yeah. you, like, even for something in this realm where you're using, like, vector fields and lots of GPU particles or just the very high detail material or something like that, it's really nice to at least have it sketched out and painted out with like rough composition, color, rough shapes and ideas of what you're going for. And mm -hmm. it gets your brain flowing in a way that activates the right side of your brain so that as you go into the very left brained exercise of creating this thing, you can step back a little bit every now and then and check with the creativity side of like, how's the composition feeling? How's it coming along? And all those things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, you're going to be thinking as you're painting it, how am I going to build this part? Is this going to be a mesh? Mm -hmm. Is this going to be camera facing? Am I going <coughs> to do an, do an export from Houdini? Or is this mm -hmm. going to be a vector field? Like what is, what is this part? doing and yeah. how is it doing that right as you're painting those brush strokes the, all of that's going to be going through your mind and that's very helpful for your planning phase especially for a more ambitious effect yeah 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 understand that. yeah understand that. okay all right anything else no no that's it thank you jason that's it yeah yeah dude i'm just excited to see how you do in the class it's going to be great to see the work coming out of you yeah me too yeah yeah i'm kind of excited as well thank you very much jason yeah, yeah. Thanks for the feedback as well. All right. Let's stay in touch. We'll see ya. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Thank you very much. See yep. you. Bye. Bye-bye.